Today we're going to compare the Sony a7 IV and the Canon R6. See which one of these might be the right camera for you. Jake and I create content here to help solo creators on the go. So I do lots of reviews of drones, cameras, lenses, and I do tips and tricks to help you tell better stories. If that's something that interests you, consider subscribing. Today we're comparing the Canon R6 and the Sony a7 IV. Two fantastic hybrid cameras, obviously, one from Canon, one from Sony. They're both uh, the $2,500 range, but we're gonna see how they compare, how they stack up against each other, and which one might be the right camera for you. In the past, Sony and Canon has been a very hotly debated topic, especially when it comes to things like color science, things like that. But that uh, gap between the two cameras has shrunk considerably in the last couple of years. And in some cases, I don't feel like there's a difference at all, especially when it comes to autofocus. When it comes to photos, the Canon R6 shoots 20 megapixel stills. They're great, as they should be. Canon has always had fantastic photo quality feel like you get a fairly really good amount of dynamic range and the low light performance in my opinion is pretty good. Here you can see a photo that was shot at f4 but also 3200 ISO. Where with the Sony a7 IV you get 33 megapixels. The low light performance is absolutely stellar. You can see the same photo shot here 3200 ISO. Very low noise but you definitely get those extra 13 megapixels which is great. And so when it comes to photo quality well, I feel like the Sony has a little bit of the edge just because it has a higher megapixel count and maybe a little bit better low light performance. Both of these cameras are absolutely stellar photo cameras and they take fantastic photos. One thing I forgot to add is that the Canon has a much higher burst photo mode at 12 frames a second raw with the mechanical shutter or up to 20 frames a second with the electronic shutter, whereas the Sony is limited to 10 frames a second regardless of what mode you use. Video quality is a little bit different. You get 4K 30, 4K 60, you get HD up to 120 in both of these cameras. So here you can see an example of the HD 120. And here you can see an example of 4K 60. The downside of the 4K60 in the Sony is that you do have that APS-C crop that crops in 1.5 times, so you have a little bit tighter, but it does look really, really great. The 4K looks fantastic. The Canon, the R6, the 4K looks really good as well. It's uh, definitely really nice, but you also don't have to deal with the crop factor in 4K60. For an example of the crop, right now I'm shooting on the Sony a7 IV. This is 4K30. This is 4K60. I'm standing in the same spot, but you can see how much it crops in. So this is the 4K30 on the Canon. Um, I'm not shooting in, S in log or anything like that. This is just standard. And now we're in 4K60. Same distance, I'm standing in the same play of spark. So that's a big difference there. If you wanna be able to shoot 4K60 with no crop, the Canon R6 is definitely the leader in that pack. But there's also things like autofocus and a few other stabilization, things like that, which make a big difference. At the uh, active stabilization on and the in lens stabilization. Just enjoying a little walk down the beach here. How's this for stabilization? Handheld, active stabilization and in lens stabilization is on. Just walking down the beach. Not bad, right? Yeah, I feel like it's okay. This is just the, uh, the normal stuff here. I don't know. It's definitely better, not as cropped in. Same thing, handheld, walking down the beach. The active steady shot and the in-lens stabilization is turned on. And, uh, yeah, I feel like the Canon is a little bit smoother. I just feel like it's a little better. The difference is pretty clear. I think Canon's a winner on the stabilization overall. 
it definitely does just a little bit better. But there is a way that the Sony can do as well as, or maybe even better than the Canon in some cases, and that's when you use the gyro flow, where you turn the stabilization off in the camera, and you go into Catalyst Browse in post, and you can stabilize it in post and get really smooth footage. So for example, this is the stabilization with gyro flow. No other stabilization, the lens stabilization, the IBIS is turned off, everything's turned off. But this is how smooth of a shot, handheld walking, you can get with the gyro data and using Catalyst Browse. But it does add extra work and an extra step to your workflow. So if time is something you don't wanna spend doing things like that, then this is definitely not a way you wanna to, want to use the camera, but it does give you options for being able to get smoother footage handheld. As far as colors go, Sony has really good color science now. They've continually improved it over the last couple of years, and even in the standard color profile, I find the colors look very true to life. You can obviously shoot in S-Log3. So this is the Sony in S-Log3, which has a tremendous amount of dynamic range when you're color grading in post. I'm curious to see how much range this has as opposed to Canon Log in the R6. Canon has always been known for fantastic color science, really great skin tones, really great everything right out of camera and you can see here in the standard color profile, it looks really, really good. You also have the Canon uh, Log 1 and 3 option. I've, From what I understand, Canon Log 2 is actually a better codec or a better log profile, but that's not an option on the R6. But when it comes to dynamic range, the a7 IV has more dynamic range, it, especially in S-Log 3. It just has a much broader dynamic range than the Canon does. Um, in the standard profiles, I'd say they're pretty much right the same, but when you're shooting in log, S-Log3 is really, really incredible with the dynamic range and what you can do with it in post. Another big difference used to be autofocus, but honestly, right now, the autofocus on the a7 IV, especially because you have IAF, animal tracking IAF, and bird tracking IAF, you have the same thing on the Canon, both of them grab the focus really fast and lock focus really well, regardless of the conditions you're shooting in. So. At this point, I don't even know if we can say that one focus system is better than the other. They're both incredibly good and incredibly quick at grabbing autofocus and locking onto your eye or whatever you're shooting. One more difference between these two cameras, especially when it comes to video mode, is the Canon has a 30 minute recording limit. So if you do long form stuff at all, sit down interviews, anything like that, you're gonna really run into that 30 minute record limit a lot and it's gonna be a real issue. Another thing that happened when the R6 and the R5 were first released is they both had overheating issues and whether it was overheating or just an internal time li timer that uh, Canon had set. They definitely both ran into issues with that. Um, a lot of that's been solved through firmware, but one thing I have had no issues with overheating on the Sony, and I've run it for well over an hour and had no problems at all. Um, obviously, right now, Overheating is almost a non-issue for me because everything is cold and frozen. It's wintertime in Alaska. Now, when you shoot a lot of video, you're obviously probably shooting also audio with that. And so each camera has their own onboard preamps. I'm using an external mic with all these because the onboard microphones of cameras never sound good. But this is an example of what the Sony sounds like. So this is the Sony in S-Log3, which has a tremendous amount of dynamic range when you're color grading in post. And then here's an example of what the Canon sounds like with exactly, or at least as close to the same same settings as I could possibly get. This is the Canon R6, and it's uh, set as close to the same as uh, my Sony is with the mic preamps, and then I've got the DDD3 Pro plugged in, set exactly the same way that it would be, and or is plugged into my uh, Sony. So. How's it sound? Then we come down to things like weather sealing, user experience, usability, things like that. Uh, there is a lot of differences. Personally, I prefer the Sony a7 IV. It has a lot more customizable controls. It's probably partly the fact that that's what I've been shooting, so it's, I'm a little more familiar with it and how to use it and set it up. But I do like the fact that I can use the different dials and dial in the shutter speed and all of that really quickly just using my hands and the dials. Now, where the Sony falls short is on the menus and the touchscreen menus. It's just nowhere near as good as Canon still. They've made great strides in the last since the a7 III or a7S III because it is partly touchscreen, but it's not completely touchscreen yet. But also, that's where Canon still really shines. Like, they, Canon has always had a fantastic user interface, and the fact that pretty much everything on the camera is accessible through the touchscreen. If you want to change something, you tap on it, you change it, and it's done. It makes it really nice, really easy, and very intuitive to use, whereas Sony, you still have a little bit of a learning curve learning how to set it up and how to use it the way that they want you to use it. But then there's also things like weather sealing. Both of these cameras are weather sealed. 
Canon, I know from experience, because I've shot Canon for a long time, does a really fantastic job of weather sealing their cameras. I mean, their cameras are like as close to bulletproof as you can come when it comes to operating in conditions like this, where it's really cold and the weather's not so great. Um, but honestly, since the a7 III, especially since uh, the a7S III, the a7 IV, or a7R4, the a7IV, the a1 are really well weather sealed. And I have tested them in some extremely harsh conditions and environments here in Alaska. And they've held up well and continued to shoot and work for me well for years. Even my a7 III worked for years for me, no problem, before I finally gave it to somebody else. Now, if you want to see other comparisons between different types of cameras, click or tap right there. I put together a small playlist that'll run you through like the a7S III and the Canon R5 and some other cameras that I've compared. As always, if you have questions, ask me in the comments below or join my live stream Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern. I just have a mile or so, two miles to hike back. It's really getting cold and the sun's starting to set, so it's time to go. I'll see you soon in the next video. Cheers.